The succession battle at the helm of Kenya's justice system is in top gear following the retirement of Chief Justice David Maraga, who will officially exit as the head of the judiciary come January 2021. The CJ is here exercising the mandate given to him by the Kenyan people. In the heat of the battle, even before the judicial service declares the position vacant, Deputy Chief Justice Philomena Mwilu has already become a subject of petitions seeking to bar her from taking over as acting Chief Justice. All these could be accusations. In fact, when Justice Mwilu was arrested at one point, it's not that by virtue of being arrested and uh, presented to court, she was guilty of the accusations. When we have parliament vetting them, they are representing the people of Kenya. So that's how first we must consider the place of the Deputy Chief Justice on how she became the Deputy Chief Justice. Constitutional pundits argue that such petitions will have no merit, saying that no conviction has been made in the allegations facing the Deputy Chief Justice. We, could not use, we cannot use other extraneous you know, considerations to determine whether the person has integrity or not. So these are accusations. It's whatever has an accusation will have a right to do so, but it does not mean that they will form a final basis of blocking the Deputy Chief Justice and the Judge of the Supreme Court from performing their duties. We should be all alive to the fact that for as long as I have a case before you, or you have a case before me, and it has not been determined, and there are no orders barring anybody, I think it's as good as what you may simply be saying that we still presume that your status quo ante remains, your position remains as if there was no such a case filed against you. Among the petitions filed is one by activist Okia Umtata that seeks to stop Maraga from handing over the office of the Chief Justice, claiming the Deputy CJ has a questionable conduct and thus wants her to be first cleared of corruption charges leveled against her. I think the way the society is balanced, sometimes we allow some level of politics because politics reflect a lot of interest. And politics also neutralize and catalyze some interest. That's the reality with politics. And being the Chief Justice or the Deputy Justice, the highest ranking officer in the Republic, the third arm of government, so definitely there are interests which bring about this political hustle and, and bustle. When considering the appointment of the Chief Justice, according to Article 161, subsection 1A of the Constitution, the President shall appoint the Chief Justice and the Deputy Chief Justice in accordance with the recommendation of the Judicial Service Commission and subject to the approval of the National Assembly. Subsection 3 of Article 161 goes ahead to say the Chief Justice and other judges of the Supreme Court shall be appointed from among persons who have at least 15 years experience as a superior court judge or at least 15 years experience as a distinguished academic, judicial officer, legal practitioner or such experience in other relevant legal field. These persons must be of integrity. A process experts agree is prone to political and external interference as political figures tend to push their interests. We have people who are direct appointees of the executive, executive headed by the president who is a politician. So the interests of the executive through you know, the political head who is, who is the president will obviously spill over to the Judicial Service Commission. The Deputy Chief Justice is expected to act as Chief Justice for a period not exceeding six months with the control of JSC becoming crucial in naming of Maraga's successor with members hopeful that an independent candidate will help steer on the independence of the judiciary which the outgoing CJ has been lamenting claiming interference from the government. Martin, Opio, K24, TV.